Hi, welcome to the second part of Triple 107 Lecture 6. We will be continuing our discussion about linear continuous wave modulation schemes. And in this lecture, in this part of the lecture, we'll be talking about variants of your full AM wave. Specifically, uh, abbreviated or the acronyms DSB, SC, and SSB. Okay. Right. So just a review of the previous lecture. We discussed the basic concepts of modulation, the importance of modulation, and uh, the uh, and its uh, definition. Okay. And we presented different types of modulation, the linear modulation versus the pulse modulation. The pulse modulation, we'll discuss it at a later lecture. For now, we'll be talking about linear modulation schemes, specifically linear continuous wave modulation. And we compared it with the nonlinear continuous wave modulation. And I also introduced in the previous lecture, amplitude modulation, where your baseband signal with bandwidth, oh, sorry, with bandwidth B, okay, is translated into a higher frequency using an AM wave modulator. However, uh, it now occupies twice the bandwidth of your original signal. And there are also other problems with this communication scheme. Uh, however, it may be easy to demodulate it. We're transmitting a signal that has no information, but we're, we have allocated some power to it. Right? Aside from the bandwidth of the AM wave being twice the message bandwidth, there is power because of your carrier wave. Right? And we don't get any inf information at all from this carrier wave. The trade-off is we get uh, a relatively simple demodulation scheme. But uh, it could be wasteful depending on the depending on the application, right? So what if we want or what if we have limitations in the power? What if we have limitations in the bandwidth? So that's where these two the other types of AM waves come in. The first one is the DSBSC or the double side band suppressed carrier modulation scheme. So the carrier here is suppressed and the uh, and the transmission power in effect is reduced. So the carrier here will be deleted so the uh, and it's also a si just a sim uh, simple modulation where you just multiply the carrier wave with the message, and the resulting signal using the modulation property of Fourier transform is this. So as you can see, the, there are no more carriers in the resulting frequency spectrum of your uh, AM wave. Okay. However, the problem is it's more difficult to demodulate it. So instead of the simple envelope detector that uh, I've shown you in the previous lecture, we need to use a coherent detector so that we are able to detect and demodulate your DSBSC signal. But at least uh, we we uh, saved some power because of using it. All right. So by using a coherent detector where we basically multiply the same signal to a carrier of a different frequency, we are able to recover the signal after low pass filtering. So if you multiply this again with uh, the same frequency translation by the modulation property, this two will be split, this will be split apart, this will also be split apart. Uh, the one that goes here and the one that goes here will be added right, and that will be the original message signal and uh, some images in the higher frequencies are produced and we can recover the original message using a low pass filter so if we filter that out we will be left with the original message right and the demodulated sorry the, the demodulated signal is equal to this right as you can see the power of the demodulated signal is highly dependent on the phase difference phi 2 of uh, the phase difference of phi 2 and phi 1. Phi 2 is the a random phase of your uh, carrier at the receiver and phi 1 is a random phase of the carrier 
at the transmitter. Okay. Coherent detection is achieved if phi2 is equal to phi1. Okay? And you won't be able to receive a message signal if the phase difference is equal to pi over 2 because cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So that means if the cos if the phase difference is pi over 2, then you won't be able to recover any message. So that's why it's important to use a coherent detector okay so we use the costas receiver to do that and as you can see here it's more complicated than a envelope detector than an envelope detector right so the costas receiver the goal is to maintain the a phase difference uh, between the two carriers as zero so that would mean that you're using a control system to control this phi 2 such that it will be coherent with phi 1. Okay? So, with that, this is how a costas receiver works. So, your signal is fed into two channels, an in-phase channel and a quadrature channel. So, the in-phase channel is basically, it will try to be in-phase. It has a cosine carrier. And the quadrature channel will have a sine carrier because of this uh, 90 degree phase shifter here. Okay. A voltage controlled oscillator will be used as the source of these two carriers right here. So it will be fed into a product modulator. Basically, your uh, message signal will be multiplied to uh, an in phase carrier, the cosine carrier, and a quadrature carrier, the sine carrier. So with that, uh, low-pass filtering will be used to uh, remove the higher frequency components. It's the same as what you saw here earlier. Oops. So it will. it's the same as the concept here. Okay. So with that, we have an output here that is uh, the cosine and the sine of the phase difference. Phi 1 minus phi 2, phi 1 minus phi 2 here. By using a phase discriminator, we are able to get the difference between your phi 1 and phi 2. We call it the phase error. So you'll get the difference between phi 1 and phi 2. And that will be fed to a voltage control oscillator. The voltage control oscillator will adjust its frequency and its phase such that phi 2 will be approximately equal to phi 1. Okay. And I'll I'll show you a demonstration of how this works using MATLAB Simulink. Don't worry, I will upload the simulation file in our uh, section. Okay, in our in our uh, piazza section. Right. So if DSBSC uh, saves power by suppressing the carrier, a single sideband modulation or SSB will save bandwidth and power by suppressing one band of your frequency spectrum. Okay? So if we suppress both the carrier and one sideband, we still have the same information we're trying to transmit, but we have, the, uh, we have saved some bandwidth uh, because of that. So there are two types of a single sideband modulation, the upper sideband and the lower sideband. The upper sideband is abbreviated as USB. The lower sideband is LSB. Okay. What this means is that if we are going to transmit the signal, okay, if we only extract the upper sideband, we'll only get the upper sideband. And since it's a real signal, it should have an even symmetry in its magnitude spectrum right here. Okay. And the same is true with the lower sideband. The lower sideband right here will be translated here and it will be reflected on the other side. Excuse me. It will look like this. Oh, sorry. The lower sideband will be transmitted he translated here and it will have a reflection on the other side. Right? That's, that's what you see here in the figure. Okay. So we have saved bandwidth. This the, the bandwidth of the resulting signal is the same as the baseband bandwidth. Okay. And the power is halved compared to the your double sideband. Okay. But the theory of operation is uh, how to how do we uh, generate your single sideband? Consider a message M of T <clears throat> with magnitude and phase response given here. 
by feeding that through a quadrature filter or a Hilbert transformer, okay, the magnitude spectrum will still be the same, but the phase will be different right here. Okay. So if we feed one to a cosine carrier, the original message to a cosine carrier, and we feed the other one to a sine carrier, the Hilbert transform, the resulting spectrum of the first term here okay, will be a double side band, uh, a double side band version of your message signal. So it will have a frequency split right here, okay, and you'll have an odd symmetry for your angle. The other one will have a spectrum right here, same magnitude spectrum as the other one, but the phase spectrum looks like this. So here, as you can see, it peaks to 180 degrees, okay? And if we add them, if we try to add these two together, you'll end up with an upper side band. Okay? Sorry, if we don't, we subtract them, rather. I apologize. If we sub subtract these two, as you can see, uh, the lower side band right here, has a phase that is that looks like this. Okay? And the lower side band here has a phase that looks like this. If we negate this phase, if we negate this uh, lower side if this uh, term right here, this will be uh, the lower side band will be eliminated. Okay? And the resulting signal will look like this. So as you can see, we still achieve Hermitian symmetry. We still achieve Hermitian symmetry, which means that this signal is physically realizable. So we're able to produce a single side band, uh, a single side band uh, wave, okay, and we have saved bandwidth and power. But the trade-off is it's more complicated to transmit. So compared to the SBSC, your DSBSC, you just multiply the carrier. Your SSB, you need to pass it through a quadrature filter, and then you uh, you must have a, a cosine and a sine carrier that are strictly uh, strictly in phase with each other, or strictly uh, maintained to have a 90 degree phase difference with each other. It has a lot of hassle when we try to transmit it. So that's a trade-off. But at least we save bandwidth and power. Okay? So if you add them, you get the lower side band. So it's the same process. So how do we demodulate your single side band carrier? Your single side band... Uh, sorry, how do we modulate, rather? How do we... Uh, how do we produce your single side band uh, signal okay first method is the frequency discrimination method so we use a bandpass filter to explicitly filter out the unwanted sideband so this is your dsbsc signal and if you pass it to a bandpass filter you will be able to select the what sideband you will like for example if it's uh, the upper sideband you just filter that out the problem with this implementation is that there is no such thing as an ideal bandpass filter. You need an ideal bandpass filter for this to work. If it if it's not ideal, then you won't be able to completely cut off the lower sideband or vice versa. Okay? Uh, better method is the phase discrimination method. The phase discrimination method looks like this, and this is uh, much more practical compared to the method, the first method, the fre frequency discrimination. The phase discrimination will implement this equation right here. So it will implement this equation how? Your M of T will be passed through a wideband phase splitter, or basically a quadrature filter, or a Hil Hilbert transformer. Okay. And that will uh, result into an m hat of t, which is the Hilbert transform of m of t. And it will be multiplied, uh, each individual uh, signals, the Hilbert transform and the original signal will be multiplied to their uh, corresponding carriers. 
So you can use a single oscillator here, just one oscillator, and you pass it through a 90 degree phase shifter. So you will have a sine carrier here. Okay. So you have a sine carrier here. Then at this multiplication here, you'll end up with this signal. After this multiplication here, you'll end up with this signal. And depending on your addition, if this is subtraction, you get your upper side band. If it's addition, then you get your lower side band. Right? And this will be implemented in the lab class. So you'll be able to observe how it works. Right? But, uh, however, uh, you need to be able to design a phase shifter that will maintain the same amplitude as the original oscillator. And you need to strictly keep these two out of phase by 90 degrees. And this is the difficult part in uh, this is a difficult part in producing a single sideband modulator in uh, designing a single sideband modulator. Okay, so compared to an AM full AM wave in a DSBSC, your single sideband modulator is the most difficult to implement among the three. So that's the trade-off when you want to save bandwidth and power. But uh, if you save bandwidth and power, your system gets more complicated, actually. And this is actually a general trade-off in communication systems. So let it be known, then, that if you want to save bandwidth and power, then you need to increase the system complexity. And this is a fundamental trade-off in designing communication systems. And this will stay true until you finish, even if, even if you, uh, even if you study digital communications, the higher subject for this, it's still true. If you want to save bandwidth and power, you need to increase your system complexity. So uh, let it be known now. Okay. All right. So for example. Try, we can try to uh, solve for the power of DSBSC and SSB. So it's the same signal as before. If the message is modulated using DSBSC, determine the power across a 1 ohm resistor. And do the same for, S for an SSB modulation, modulation. So the total power of the AM wave is this. For a double sideband suppressed carrier, there is no carrier. And there is no concept of modulation index. Therefore, you will be only left with the amplitude of the carrier and the power of the message. Okay? So the power of the message here is not normalized. So compared to your full AM, if you want to solve for P sub M, uh, the P sub M is normalized. For a DSBSC, it's uh, not normalized. Okay, so try to solve that. Substitute the values. This is the power of your DSBSC signal. Now for SSB, well, you just need to have the power, you just need to have the power of your DSBSC because you're just uh, for an SSB modulation, you're suppressing the other sideband, and that is the other sideband contributes to half of the power, and if you're suppressing that, then the resulting power of an SSB signal is half the power of a DSBSC signal. Okay? And that's how you solve that. Okay? And that's the end of this part of the lecture. If you have any questions or comments, if I left a detail missing, do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you for listening. See you next meeting.